Finally tonight, so much of the world has ground to a halt this Lent, and now Easter's upon us. I thought it might be instructive to use this time to discover something we rarely have time for, art. Now, even though the great museums dedicated to housing these treasures are closed, my next guest has some suggestions about how you can still enjoy great works of art this Holy Week and Easter. Please welcome historian and author of How Catholic Art Saved the Faith, Dr. Elizabeth Lev joins us from Rome. Liz, during the global coronavirus outbreak, several museums around the world have chosen to have virtual tours of their galleries available online, including the Louvre, the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery, uh, the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, Russia, and several others. How important is it for people, especially now, to be able to visit these beautiful works of art? Well, I think in a world that had become so accustomed to travel and moving around, it's really very moving that staying home, they can continue to visit and to see and to explore things, all a gift of our very modern digital age. I mean, this would be a very different animal were we talking only 20 or 30 years ago. And the right. number of museums that already had excellent digital collections and created virtual tours, of course, the one that uh, I, I have closest to my heart is the Vatican Museum, so it's actually produced a series of digital virtual tours that one can do. So you can go visit these museums from home. Right. Now, the, you, you mentioned the Vatican Museums. They've been closed to the public since March 9th. Um, however, there are these virtual tours. What works would you suggest people visit at the Vatican Museums or tours to take in the comfort of their home? Are there particular ones you'd recommend? Well, I think uh, I, I think one of the nice things is uh, we're coming up on the uh, anniversary of Raphael's death, which will be next mm -hmm. Monday on, on, on April 6th. And of course, visiting the Raphael rooms and these unbelievably beautiful images that the Vatican Museum mm. can produce will be very special. The Sistine Chapel, naturally. But you know what? Um, the Vatican Museums, together with Vatican News, has produced, they produce every day uh, a work of art that they put out there called Art Arte che ci unisce, art that brings us together. And so they actually have been proposing works with meditations given by the Holy Father in order to kind of guide us as we look at individual works. Because as you know, walking into a museum can be overwhelming. So in a certain sense, these virtual tours, like, oh my gosh, you've got you know, 10,000 works at your disposal. But to have this guiding in the meditation is very, very, very important. Mm. Last week in the Netherlands, and I'm going to switch around here for a moment, uh, thieves stole a Vincent van Gogh painting. It wasn't the famous Starry Night. Uh, it, it's a rather dreary painting titled uh, Spring Garden, the Vicarage Garden in uh, Nguyen in the spring. Is there anything that would make this particular painting a target of thieves? And how diligent do these museums have to be uh, in their security front, given that there's no tourism and their guard may be down? That's a really, really important question. And as a matter of fact, the museums need to keep, you know, skeleton staff, they need to keep surveillance going because really the problem is a work of art, which as you say, isn't one of the superstar works of art, mm -hmm. is something that's particularly vulnerable. And so in this particular moment, you know, the churches, the museums, this this moment wow. when we're attending is fixated on, on, on coronavirus makes a work of art very, very, very vulnerable and certain museums equally vulnerable. Hmm. In Venice, when the plague hit during the terrible epidemic in 1630, the, the Venetian Senate built the Basilica di Santa Maria della Salute, uh, referred to by most locals as simply Salute, which is in Italian health, uh, in honor of Mary. Um, it's a representation of how faith saved the city of Venice. Do you think we'll see similar works of art at the end of this coronavirus crisis, this global crisis? Oh, what an interesting question. Venice, I think this is interesting. It's interesting that you chose Venice because of its tremendous similarity. The situation of New Orleans, lots of people packing together a lot of water. Yep. Venice had the of plagues on more than one more than one occasion, and so that was actually the mm -hmm. second church they built after the Church of the Redentore, and so Venice had a way of not only creating a church but creating processions for these for these churches. Then you have in Naples mm -hmm. they erect these enormous columns, these plague columns. So it would be very interesting to see what our age should our age choose to turn to faith. Isn't that 
what these churches and beautiful monuments mean. It means that we understand that the situation has gone beyond our control and we can only look for, we, we have to look for divine assistance to help our human efforts. And so that I think is really, it would be particularly telling should this very modern age, often referred to as the post-religion, post-Christian, post-human age, what if we recognized our humanity and produced something that saw our need to look beyond? Mm -hmm. The coronavirus has suspended exhibits all over the world, as you know. You mentioned that Raphael, the 500th anniversary of Raphael, the Vatican had this extensive exhibit. They, they hung those beautiful tapestries we saw several weeks ago. Um, give me a sense of Raphael's contribution to Catholic art, and are there particular pieces that you would direct our audience to as we go into Holy Week? I think uh, it, what's very interesting is there's a lot of debate about what, what killed Raphael at age 37, amazingly, on April 6th of 1520. Many people think he had a fever for 15 days and then mm. he was bled and he died. So the idea is that perhaps he was caught up also in an epidemic. And what was Raphael mm. working on when he died? The last thing he was producing, the thing is dying breath, was an incredible painting of the Transfiguration. And I would strongly recommend that your viewers look at this painting where the lower part of the painting, Raphael paints a gamut of human emotions. They're healing, they're the, the apostles trying to heal the boy possessed by demons. And you see fear and you see emphasis and you see people who seem out of their mind in, 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 in reactions, but all lines in that painting, every line in that painting draws your eye upwards. And what's up at the top? The image of Jesus transfigured, a light that physically rolls back the darkness. What a beautiful image for us to imagine Jesus, to think of Jesus as a light, that as the darkness seems to have taken on a physical force, which is too much for us, Raphael's final image is Jesus is that light that can physically push back, roll back the, the, the shadows of darkness. I love that. Thank you for ending that way. Liz Lev from Rome, stay safe and uh, a happy Tridium, a happy Easter to you. And same to you, happy Easter.